back in the driver's seat, I'm about to encounter some of the millions of feral animals that populate outback Australia. There are bleating goats, and further up the road, bleeding donkeys. Stubborn as these three. <laughs> Come on, guys, clear the road. No way, they're just going to hang there. Inquisitive to these donkeys. Well, this is all so amusing, but we do have a tight agenda. On your way, fellas. Ahead, a former mining settlement that time has almost forgotten. This is Silverton. There's a wonderful collection of historic sandstone buildings here, but few people. One of the few to live here is Chris Fraser. Mining was established here, predominantly silver, just silver mines. And it lasted until 1888 when Broken Hill was founded and everybody pretty much packed up overnight and went to live in Broken Hill. There was 4,500 people here in, in Silverton. There was 12 pubs, uh, three breweries, stock exchange, police station, hospital, jail, had a lot. And overnight, Boom, broken out. Now, Chris is the publican of what is arguably the most filmed hotel in the world. His modest pub, the Silverton Hotel, has starred in many famous films like Mad Max. He's adorned the pub wall with memorabilia from some of the better known feature films. Chris tells me that some days he'll have three international film crews queuing to film his pub for TV commercials and movies. The movie industry has really put Sylvan Hotel on the map. It's a sleepy old town, but yeah, uh, every day there's always something happening, mate. One of his star possessions is this, a replica of the car that starred in Mad Max 2. It's a 1976 XC Ford Falcon, whereas uh, the original Interceptor was a 1974 XB or something like that, yeah. But the old two-door coupes are getting hard to find, and that was the only one I could get about seven or eight years ago to make one, yeah. Got the little button on the gear lever to turn the supercharger on and off, just like Mad Max. When he's driving along and it runs out of fuel and flicks the switch down and the supercharger stops. <laughs> Can you see me, man? I'm the Night Rider! <laughs> We leave the Knight Rider to drive across the border into South Australia. We're heading now for the ruggedly spectacular Flinders Rangers, a trip we'll feature in the next episode of Travel Oz. Travel Oz. There's something very special happening on Australia's beaches. The surf patrols who safeguard our swimmers are volunteers. That's a distinctly Australian tradition, as the Two Tims report. Because Australia is an island continent, it is completely surrounded by water. So on your travels throughout this country, you're guaranteed to spend a lot of time in and around the ocean. The ocean, however, is extremely dangerous and unpredictable. So each time you jump in, you really are putting your life in the hands of Mother Nature. However, if you do run into any trouble in Australian waters, chances are it is these guys that will risk their lives to save yours. These are the real Aussie heroes. So, what image comes to mind when you think of surf life saving in Australia? Is it the men and women in red and yellow caps patrolling the beach? Perhaps it's the training of fresh and up and coming rescuers. Maybe it's the picture of a surf boat battling the waves. Whatever your perception of surf life saving is, we can guarantee you that there is a whole lot more than meets the eye. What lies beneath these images is a unique and fascinating story epitomising the character of Australian people and providing a service ever so vital to the Australian lifestyle. For nearly 100 years, Australian surf lifesavers have been keeping the nation's beaches safe, having performed over 530,000 rescues and provided first aid to over one million others. We have over a million people, young, fit athletes, male and female in Australia, that volunteer their services each weekend to save people, keep them safe from dangerous surf, keep them safe from sharks, from all different scenarios. Any beach in Australia, regardless of where you go, we try and have the same underlying principles of, of beach management, making sure you've got your red and yellow, everyone's identifiable, and uh, doesn't really matter where you go, the 310 patrol beaches, uh, everyone should be looked after in the same way. 
But what many people do not realise is that a large portion of Australia's surf life savers are actually volunteers, giving up their time over weekends and public holidays to service their community. We have about eight to ten people on patrol every weekend um, and they rotate in rosters and patrols. So they're all volunteers and they generally do a four hour stint in the morning and then afternoon on both weekends, Saturday and Sunday. When we do come down, we have to set up the beach, we have to bring the gear down and make it safe. We also do checks to make sure that where they're swimming is going to be the safest spot. The conditions can really change out there very quickly and even this morning um, we've seen some strong rips come up, the wind comes up and generally when the banks change and the tides go out, uh, you can really have some treacherous conditions and we can lose 20, 30 swimmers off um, in a, a rip very quickly. So probably following simple instructions of life, so swimming within your limitations and within the flagged area is really important. Okay, so we'll start off on the beach today. The biggest thing to remember when you come to the beach is swim between the flags. This is where you're safest. This is where we pick where the best spot for you to swim is. These boards are what we can use in quick and rapid response rescues. The board itself, we like to have up here quickly so that we can pick it up and run much faster. And at any point we may be called on to actually go out and save a life. Okay, so what we've got here is the IRB, the inshore rescue boat, otherwise known as the duck. It's one of my favourite toys. We race them and we also use them for rescue services. The boat itself can carry many people and it's very much used widely for mass rescues and when we have to do a big rescue a long way away. Okay, so here we have the tube. This is mostly used in the surf break because we can simply slip on the harness. Once we get out to the patient, we actually clip this around the patient's waist and that way we can control them and hold them in it. Here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> This isn't paid, this is out of the generosity of their heart to help out others to come and enjoy what we have come to love. We're probably the most enthusiastic members of the Surf Life Saving Club are these little nippers right here. These guys are the future of surf life saving in Australia and will one day be patrolling beaches and saving lives. There are approximately 50,000 junior surf life savers in Australia ranging from ages 5 to 13 years. They spend their time learning the basics of surf awareness and safety and refining their skills in the surf and on the sand. Every surf lifesaving club has their own group of little nippers who train and grow up in the club, often forming strong relationships with each other and the beach. But watch out, they can be cheeky little characters. <laughs> I want to be a professional lifesaver. I want to be a professional lifesaver when I'm older. But don't think the competition is all over once these kids grow up. It only gets more competitive with higher stakes and bigger toys. And one of the prized events is this, Ocean Thunder. This is the final event of the high-profile professional surfboat events, restricted to 24 elite open men's crews and 12 elite women's crews. Today, teams from all over the country, as far as Victoria, Western Australia and Northern Queensland have come here to compete against each other. These men and women require huge amounts of fitness, skill and teamwork to battle the brutal waves. This is probably one of the most dangerous elements of the life-saving competition. The waves are big, the boats are heavy, the oars are heavy and collisions are common. Well, surf boat started back uh, in the early 1900s. There was uh, a couple of brothers called the Sly Brothers at Manly, and they uh, they had a fishing boat, and they saw people getting into trouble as they were starting to surf, and so they used to go out and rescue them in uh, in these old wooden rowing boats, and uh, it was so successful that then they uh, people said, well, look, if we we probably should be uh, doing this at more beaches, and so other surf clubs started doing it, and then after probably 20 years they decided well, we should race those. You do it with your mates, you have a hell of a lot of fun, you do some trips. They used to say you pick the boat crew by putting them against the brick wall and throw a brick at them and the ones that didn't duck were in the crew. Australian surf life saving really is something that is a vital part of the Aussie beach loving way of life. It is unique and saves thousands of lives every year. But the best part about it is that anybody can get involved.